Hello everyone, in this video, we will bring you a performance preview of the Redmi Turbo 4 Pro. As one of the first Snapdragon 8S Gen 4 models, how well been tuned? Let's take a look at its actual performance. Let's quickly glance at the chip specifications. The Redmi Turbo 4 Pro is equipped with the Snapdragon 8S Gen 4, using TSMC's 4 nanometer process technology. In terms of architecture, this chip also adopts an all-big core architecture, specifically one 3.01 GHz Cortex-X4 ultra-large core. The others are Cortex-A720 large cores, including three 3. 0.01 gigahertz, two 2.8 gigahertz, and two 2.01 gigahertz cores. This specification seems quite stacked, so how does it perform in reality? Let's run a benchmark test. After testing, the highest AN22 score for the Redmi Turbo 4 Pro can reach 2.14 million points, which is almost equivalent to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Do you think this performance meets expectations? Of course, scores are just theoretical. Next, let's look at the actual game performance. The testing environment remains at a room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, with the screen brightness uniformly set at 200 nits. First, let's check the Honor of Kings ranked match test. All graphics settings are set to maximum, and only match data is recorded. During the battle, the Redmi Turbo 4 Pro performed very easily. The average frame rate over 30 minutes was 120.1 frames, with power consumption at only 4.1 watts, ensuring a smooth and consistent experience throughout. After the test, the battery consumption was 5%, the device's ending temperature was 41.6 degrees Celsius, and the screen was 42.9 degrees Celsius. Slightly warm, but still comfortable to touch. We can see that Honor of Kings poses no challenge to the Redmi Turbo 4. Next, let's increase the pressure and see how it performs in Genshin Impact. The test scene is still running around in Sumeru City, but the Genshin Impact resolution on the Redmi Turbo 4 Pro reaches 886p, which is higher than the previous 720c load. In half an hour of running around Sumeru City, it achieved an average frame rate of 59.7 frames, very close to full frames. However, the 886p graphics quality indeed brought a higher load, resulting in some frame drops in the last few minutes, with an average power consumption reaching 7.4 watts. After the test, its battery consumption was 12%, the device's ending temperature was 49.7 degrees Celsius, and the screen was 46.7 degrees Celsius. From specific data, the scheduling of the Redmi Turbo 4 Pro is quite aggressive. The average frequency of the 3 3.01 gigahertz. A 720SA reached 2.8 gigahertz, with usage rates exceeding 50%. The X4 Ultra Large Core had a usage rate of 32% and an average frequency of 1.5 gigahertz. Relatively speaking, the snap Snapdragon 8 S Gen 4 driving Genshin Impact at 886p is a bit stressful. If reduced to 720p, it should provide a better gaming experience with longer full frame time and better power consumption and heat dissipation performance. Next, let's take a look at another highly demanding game, Honkai Star Rail. The test scene is chosen in the new TC hub with a resolution of 775p. In half an hour of testing, the Redmi Turbo 4 Pro's average frame rate was 54 frames, with average power consumption controlled at 5.9 watts. After the test, its battery consumption was 10%, the device's ending temperature was 43.6 degrees Celsius, and the screen was 44.4 degrees Celsius. Of course, this is not the highest load scene in Honkai Star Rail, but we can see that the GPU performance of the Snapdragon 8S Gen 4 is not sufficient to perfectly handle Honkai Star Rail. At the start of the game, the Redmi Turbo 4 Pro locked it at 54 frames, and then stayed steady at that frame rate. In terms of visual smoothness, this approach is actually pretty good, reducing the sense of stuttering. From the above tests, the performance of this chip in the Redmi Turbo 4 has indeed reached a fairly high level. The theoretical scores rival last year's flagship chips, and the actual game performance is commendable. It can smoothly run Genshin Impact at higher resolutions. Overall, the all-big core architecture brings strong performance, and most games can be run smoothly with good stability. As for daily use, that goes without saying. However, because the current game loads have increased compared to last year, this places higher demands on the phone's power consumption and thermal design. Alright, that's all for this video. If you found it helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next videos. Bye-bye.